The year is 2012, and after six years on the market, the Nintendo Wii had sold 95 million consoles, completely dominating sales numbers over the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. The Nintendo Wii was a smash hit, and by introducing motion controls, it brought new innovation to its gameplay. Microsoft and Sony tried to emulate the Wii's innovation with the Kinect and PlayStation Move but failed. Nintendo was firing on all cylinders. But that all started to change late in 2012. The successor to the Wii, the Nintendo Wii U, launched with only 400,000 units sold in its first week, down from the 600,000 that the Wii sold in 2006. Something was wrong. Numbers were down and although Nintendo PR attempted to mitigate the fallout, it's widely believed that with the Wii U, Nintendo failed to delineate the Wii U from the Wii, with many consumers believing the Wii U was just a Wii with an HDMI port and not a necessary upgrade. Lack of third-party developers also didn't help the situation, and bad timing can't be discounted either with the announcements of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One just a few months later. But this video isn't about the failure of the Nintendo Wii U, rather, something that curiously occurred soon after the launch. In December of 2012, Nintendo announced the release of the Wii Mini, a budget, slimmed-down version of the Nintendo Wii for $99, and initially only available in Canada. When Nintendo announced the Wii Mini in November of 2012, I was in a state of disbelief. The Wii U was just released and the Wii itself was still selling a lot of systems per week. So why would Nintendo introduce a new Wii console into the ecosystem? So this is the Nintendo Wii Mini. Originally released in Canada in December of 2012, it was later released in Europe and the United States in 2013. Retailing for just $99 in North America, it's a very bare bones cut down version of the Wii. Just how cut down? Well, opening up the box reveals the Wii Mini itself. It's an interesting design with a top loading DVD drive rather than the traditional slot loading of the Wii. I like the red and matte black aesthetic and the look reminds me of those double screen game and watch games like Oil Panic or Donkey Kong released back in 1981. Taking a look at the back of the unit, there is the 12 volt power connector, an AV out and a sensor bar connector. There's also a single USB port. All these connectors are identical to the Wii. Opening up the box itself, you get the console, a Wii Motion Plus controller in matching red and the nunchuck. It also comes with a 12 volt power supply, a composite AV out, and the sensor bar. On the top of the Wii Mini, there are two buttons. Left is for power, and right is to open the DVD tray. So why the name Wii Mini? Well, apart from the obvious aesthetic size differences, this is a completely bare bones version of the Wii. There is no internet connectivity at all, which is clearly outlined on the box in four point font. This means no Netflix or YouTube apps. There's also no SD card slot, no backward compatibility with GameCube games, and the AV port only supports composite out at 480i. For me, the best way to get the most out of the Wii Mini is by going old school into a CRT. Connecting it up to my Commodore 1084S monitor is a much more enjoyable experience. The first thing you will note is the complete lack of channels on the main display, and without the internet connectivity, you'll only be seeing mostly empty boxes on the screen. Fortunately, the Wii has 4x3 aspect ratio settings that you can select. And you know what? With a CRT and the simplicity of this system, just plug in the game and play, gives the Wii Mini its appeal. Most people, including myself, only ever played the original Wii on a flat panel display, and the CRT really makes some of these old games pop.
If you're wondering how the composite output looks on a modern display, this is it in all its 480i glory. Just when you think it's not too bad and you can live with it, you will come across something like this scene here in Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess that just looks terrible. This is really a subpar video image. Attempting to upscale it with my XRGB Frame Meister doesn't fare too much better either. 480i composite stinks on a modern TV. So let's be real for a moment. The original Wii can do all this and more, so why would anyone on earth want a Wii Mini and why did Nintendo decide to release it in the first place? Nintendo stated that the price was to be affordable as possible to everyone and have the widest audience as they could. If we look at the official press release, Nintendo stated that the $99 price point was a great holiday gift. Canada was most likely selected as the test market. It seems unlikely that Nintendo would launch the Wii Mini in the USA as the Wii was still selling extremely well with over 300,000 units per week by the time the Wii U was released and Nintendo did not want to alter that landscape. As for the omission of online, Nintendo stated that the reason we took online functionality out was we don't believe that everyone needs that to play games. A lot of Wii experiences, and there's over 1400 of them, are disc based Wii games that don't require online functionality for you to have fun. Now when you play Wii or you played some of the games on the Wii U, there is an enhanced fun factor when you play them online. But this system isn't designed for the player who's looking to have an online experience. Wii Mini is designed for families, or a late adopter, or someone who maybe isn't even a gamer yet, and maybe doesn't realise they've got a gamer hiding inside of them. I also have another theory about why Nintendo released the Wii Mini. In 2012, the micro console was becoming popular. The Ouya was announced in July of 2012 as a $99 home console that contained an NVIDIA Tegra 3 chipset. The Kickstarter fundraiser was reached in 8 hours and finished with $8 million raised, that's over 900% of their original goal. While it was never confirmed by Nintendo, I believe that the Wii Mini was launched at the same $99 price point to also compete with the Ouya. After all, Nintendo had the entire Wii game catalogue behind the Wii Mini and it was more familiar with consumers over the Ouya. In mid-2013, the Wii Mini was released in the USA for the same $99 price point, but with the addition of Mario Kart. This was actually the cheapest way you could get a copy of Mario Kart and a Wii Motion Plus, so this made this product appealing for the wrong reasons. In the end, the Wii Mini was discontinued in October of 2013, and will probably go down as one of the biggest WTF moments in Nintendo history. One of the pleasant side effects of the closed Wii Mini is the fact that this system is not moddable at all. Now the Nintendo Wii is the exact opposite. It's probably the most popular modded system up there next to the original Xbox. It's very simple and trivial to mod a Nintendo Wii. But the Wii Mini is a completely different story. Because there's no SD slot, no Ethernet, no GameCube backward compatibility, Nintendo inadvertently made the Wii Mini one of the most unhackable consoles ever. It's almost impossible to mod this device. I do say almost impossible, as in theory there are some methods that could potentially work, including dumping and reflashing the NAND, or possibly looking at exploiting the system via the Wii Mote memory functionality. Another idea may be to utilize a USB to SD card adapter and trying to mount the SD card card, but all these ideas are just thoughts, and none of them have been ever known to work, at least to date. And since the Wii Mini is so obscure, and the Wii is cheap and simple to mod, this isn't really worth the time and effort for most hackers to even consider. Still, it's very impressive that Nintendo managed to release a system like the Wii Mini that's completely locked down. A shame that they didn't take notes when they were designing the security around the Nintendo Switch. Many critics felt that Nintendo was out of touch with the Wii Mini, but I disagree. As with many of their failed hardware efforts, they had a vision to open up gaming to more people by providing a cut-down system, something that's commonplace these days with many cheap knockoff clone systems that you can buy in stores for $30. Providing a console that's only ever meant to play games without all the bells and whistles is an interesting concept, one that you could say Nintendo has brought over to the Nintendo Switch. As for me, I like the Wii Mini. I can get behind the games only idea, but the system is also too confined for its own good. Still, I love the top loader and its form factor. 
And finally, if you are looking to pick one up, they are pretty cheap on eBay, but a fully boxed one will cost you a few hundred dollars. Not really worth the price of admission. Well guys, I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Let me know what you thought about the Nintendo Wii Mini in the comments below. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video or anything else, please let me know. Now before I go, I do want to mention I'm running a competition right now. So for those people that missed or didn't see the 100,000 subscriber special, I am giving away an original Xbox, an original Xbox controller, a composite cable, and a modern vintage gamer t-shirt just like this one that I'm wearing here all to one lucky winner. All you need to do is get entered into the link that I'll have in the description below. So get yourself entered and good luck. Well guys, that will do it for this video. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.